So you're going to go to the Water Quality Parameters Quest. When you start that quest, it tells you, if you don't know yet, what a parameter is, what the word parameter means. You've got a link here to Google Classroom, and the assignment with the graphic organizer to take notes is Water Quality Research Notes. It says it right here. Now, if you click here where it says use the following websites, that is where you're going to find links to some amazing websites that'll tell you exactly what you need to know. So you're going to click on this link, and here's pH right here. So we click on the first link, and I'm going to left click, or right click, I should say, and open link in a new tab. That way I've got a tab open with my links and another tab open with the new website I just went to. So this is environmental or fundamentals of environmental measurements and it's got information about the pH of water. Now this paragraph right here, the very first one, is really complicated. So I want to break it down for you and help you understand it. The first thing you need to realize about pH is that it starts with water. And we know that one molecule of water, the smallest particle of water, or piece of water, is H2O. H2O means that one little tiny piece of water or molecule of water is made up of two hydrogens, one oxygen. Now, one thing that happens in water is that those two hydrogens and that one oxygen tend to split up a little bit. One of the hydrogens stays bonded really closely to the oxygen, while the other hydrogen kind of hangs out on its own. Because they're trying to split apart, the hydrogen has a positive charge, and this OH, hydroxide, has a negative charge. Well, we know that positives and negatives attract, so they stay together as one water molecule. Now, if something tends to put in more hydrogens into this solution, like in the ocean, with ocean acidification, more of these makes the water acidic. More positive hydrogens makes the water acidic. And if you think of what I'm saying, positive hydrogen, pH. One meaning of pH is positive hydrogen. Now, if there's more negative hydroxides, the water is basic. or alkaline. Um, this image here on the website, which is what they're referring to when they say that pH of water is measured on a logarithmic scale. Uh, let me kind of explain what that means. <clears throat> so pH is not like dissolved oxygen. Dissolved oxygen, there are actual pieces of oxygen in between these H2O water molecules. For pH, there's nothing you can pull out or for the sensor to count. It just determines either how strongly acidic it is or how strongly basic. And, and the scale goes from 0 to 14, where 0 is a very strong acid and 14 is a very strong base. Now, if you have an equal number of positive hydrogens and an equal number of negative hydroxides, you've got pure H2O, and that has a value of 7. So 7 right here, which is called neutral, is pure water. So 7, neutral meaning it's not acidic, 
not basic. That's plain, pure water. Now, when you go down this way into six, five, four, three, that's becoming more and more acidic, meaning it has more positive hydrogens. The reason this is called a logarithmic scale is because it tells you how much stronger each number is. So if I go from seven to six, a liquid with a pH of six is 10 times more acidic than water. If I go from a six to a five, the five is 10 times more acidic than the six. So if I'm going from seven to five, if I'm gonna compare them, this is 10 times 10. So going from seven to five, a pH liquid of five is 100 times more acidic than one of seven, than pure water. And, and it just keeps going. So if I'm gonna go from six to three, I've got 10 times 10 times 10, a three is a thousand times more acidic than a six. And it works the same way going towards basic. If I'm going from seven to eight, eight is 10 times more basic than a liquid of pH seven. And a nine is 10 times more basic than a liquid with a pH of eight. And if I go from seven, let's see, let's go from seven to 10, that's 10 times 10 times 10. A pH 10 is a thousand times more acidic than water. Whereas a pH 11 is a thousand times more acidic than a pH 8. And 8 is around the pH that our oceans should be. Saltwater oceans tend to be a little more basic. Freshwater, like rivers, streams, and lakes, tend to be a little more acidic. Now here's something else that's really uh, cool. If you've got a strong acid with a bunch of extra positive hydrogens and a base with a bunch of extra negative hydroxides and they combine, you end up with H2O. That's what they mean when they say they neutralize each other. So the three, which is just as strong an acid as an 11 is as strong a base, if you put a three liquid, pH three, and you combine it with a pH 11, they neutralize each other. They cancel each other out. And that's an important thing to know too. That's how this works. Every time you go over one, these two are equal. Over one, these two are equal in terms of strength. They can cancel each other out. So this is a good thing to understand about pH. So that's gonna help you make sense of this uh, paragraph right here, which if you just read it by itself, you're gonna be like, I don't get it. This is uh, uh, too hard. Now, I did say pH could stand for positive hydrogen. Another way I've seen it described is power of hydrogen. And this part, forget the word molar concentration. What you're looking at is the pH is determined by the number of hydrogen ions, and that's the positive. Um, and then the next part is uh, pretty advanced math, trigonometry, I believe. <clears throat> and uh, they call here the OH negative hydroxyl ions. I call them hydroxide. It's the same thing. Seven is pure water. So this is telling, this paragraph is telling you what hopefully I, I tried to explain just now. Okay, so scrolling down this next paragraph, uh, here, here's what I was showing you about how H2O can be separated into positive hydrogen, negative hydroxyl, or hydroxide. This 
we can skip this we can skip well let me see here alkalinity and pH are directly related at a hundred percent yeah skip that okay now we get to the part of why is pH important and and this is a good section for you to read too if the pH of water is too high or too low, the aquatic organisms living within it will die. pH can also affect the solubility and toxicity of chemicals and heavy metals in water. So if you add those pollutants, things that pollute water, into a water that's already got a high pH or a low pH, it's even worse. So this chart here uh, tells you the pH that these animals live comfortably in and can thrive and survive. So fish, it's about 6.5, pH of 6.5, all the way to it looks like about almost 9 or 9. That is within their uh, a range they can survive. Then we've got plants can uh, be at very alkaline water, and crabs, snails, and mussels can be in very alkaline water too. Remember, it's acid that will break down the calcium carbonate, the carbonate of their shells, that will dissolve it. But basic won't. Fish die, of course, within a range of, it looks like 11 to 14. If we go this way, so here's Humans can uh, uh, withstand that range. Seawater, you can notice here, it's between about, it's in the eight to nine range. Um, this tells you the pH of blood, and then the pH of streams can actually be a little basic and then go into a little bit acidic. Looks like from 6.5 to about 7.5. So it's got a range, and our creek, if you look at our data, should fall within that range. Precipitation, rain, can be from five to six. Acid rain, though, we could have really bad acid rain that has as low a pH as one and up to five. And then fish die anywhere from three to zero. So you've got, this is a handy chart for you to either reproduce on your poster to share at the Youth Summit. And it says here, um, when the pH level gets beyond what they can survive in, uh, it can stress animal systems, reduce hatching and survival rates. So even if it doesn't kill the fish, it'll make it so they, their eggs don't hatch or, or they won't survive even to the point of laying the eggs. And that will impact returning fish because there won't be many to return. The more sensitive a species, the more affected by changes in pH. So hardier species will withstand more pH change. Now it says while humans have a higher tolerance for pH levels, drinkable levels range from four to 11. With minimal gastrointestinal irritation, there are still concerns. pH values of great, greater than 11 for us can cause skin and eye irritation. So this part tells you how it affects humans as does a pH below 4. A pH value below 2.5 will cause irreversible damage to skin and organ linings. Lower pH levels increase the risk of mobilized toxic metals that can be absorbed even by humans. And levels above 8.0 cannot be effectively disinfected with chlorine, causing other indirect uh, risks. In addition, pH levels outside of 6.5 to 9.5 can damage and corrode pipes, not just us, but our pipes where we get our drinking water, and other systems which can put heavy metal into our drinking water or maybe even our food. So this you can read to, ah, now here are things that influence the pH in water. For those of you who studied ocean acidification, you're going to know this one carbon dioxide will lower the pH, making it more acidic. And it's got the chemical formula here. 
So carbon dioxide plus water will make carbonic acid. And that will split up into a bicarbonate and then freeing up more hydrogen ions into the water, which is what makes it more acidic. And this has a nice uh, picture for you so you can see the rising acidity. Is this total changes in annual oceanic pH from the 1700 to the 1990s? Uh, carbonic, ma carbonate materials in limestone are two elements that can buffer pH changes, so they keep it from changing too, too much. And yeah, calcium carbonate and other bicarbonates can combine with both hydrogen or hydroxyl ions to neutralize pH, which is good. So that's a good one to read. Um, so unpolluted rain is slightly acidic, pH of 5.6. The pH of rain can also be lower due to volcanic ash, sulfate-reducing bacteria in wetlands, airborne particulates from wildfires and lightning. Uh, so this can increase the acidity. And that's, that'll make more acid rain. Other influences that are made by humans, anthropogenic is a word that means caused by humans, usually related to pollution. Pollution is how we affect the pH of water. And uh, acid rain is a form of precipitation with pH less than 5.0. And it comes with the reaction. So acid rain can be caused by mixture with nitrogen oxides sulfur oxides and other acidic compounds including carbon dioxide and it comes from smelting operations mining or fossil fuel combustion burning of fossil fuels as we learned from all the climate change videos we saw and then here you have minimum ph levels uh, for different types of fish and and other animals like the frog so this is a good one to read when you scroll down to typical pH levels. And this part here is good because you can read about plants and soil pH because all this comes into play with our creek. It's got plants on the riparian zone right on the edges of the creek and then there's the, the bottom of the creek where the gravel, the rocks, and, and the sand and soil Now it says here, freshwater lakes, ponds, and streams usually have a pH of 6 to 8, depending on the surrounding soil and bedrock. And then luckily our creek doesn't have this because harmful effects become noticeable when the pH of water falls below 5 or rise above 9.6. So hopefully this will give you some information. Uh, no, scratch that. So let's check out. So let's check out the next pH website. See what it has. So this one Yeah, skip that one. So looking at the next website, this one is a good one to read if you want more information about how carbon dioxide uh, lowers the pH of water. This one for how pH meters work. This one can tell you how uh, our sensor actually was able to tell the pH of our creek water. And it goes into what is acidity. And this is a good review. So it's got uh, positively charged hydrogen ions make it acidic, negatively charged hydroxide ions make it alkaline or basic. So this is good. Another way, if, if you find the other one too confusing, read this one. This one, I like it. it it's uh, more regular English, so to speak. And then here you get into what pH actually means. And here we go to power of hydrogen. I already mentioned positive hydrogen. And here's another one. 
potential of hydrogen. So there isn't one meaning of pH. So that, that's a good one. I highly recommend reading through that one. Then this one, called the power of hydrogen, I had to put on there because that way you could see right away what pH stand for. And this one gets into acids, bases, and salts. What is a salt? And what does a salt have to do with all this pH stuff? This one will give you some uh, information about that. And I thought it was a good website in case you want to learn more. You can take this learning as far as you want, or I should say go as deeply into understanding pH as you can. This has a great chart for things that most people know and tells you what pH they are. So you can see milk of magnesia is in the range of about 10, so it neutralizes the acids in your stomach to make you feel better. Vinegar has a pH of about 3, which, you know, you put a fish in vinegar, they're going to die. But this chart is one you can um, either draw yourself on your poster or you can use this one on your poster. It's a good one. pH values of water. So this is another one that gives you pH values of things we normally drink or eat so people can understand. And this is a good thing to share at the Youth Summit. So the kids you're talking to can understand, oh, that's what a pH of, of 4 is. Um, milk has a pH of 6.2. Oh, I thought it would have been more basic, but it's a, it's, it's a little bit acidic. While well, bleach has a pH of 12. Don't drink that. And then why pH is important, I want to point this one out. Um, because it has more examples of what pH levels affect fish in what ways. So this is, oh look, mosquito larvae are destroyed at a pH value of maximum one, and there is no minimum. That's good because the benthic macroinvertebrates we know are very important for the salmon, and they tell us if the stream is polluted. So that's a good one for you to have. And then the last one is water properties, pH. Uh, this one is a USGS site that has another diagram of pH. Now USGS is public domain, so you can just take this picture. And this one you can put on your website and just give them credit that you got it from there. And that's it. This should give you everything you need to fully understand pH and, and do a great presentation at the Youth Summit.